Hi everybody. In this short lecture, we are going to discuss reciprocal spaces and reciprocal space lattices. I'm sure many of us have heard of uh, these mathematical constructs, but we've got to admit that uh, reciprocal space is not entirely intuitive. It turns out that uh, the existence of uh, lattices in real space implies the existence of reciprocal space lattices. Actually, the reciprocal space lattice is nothing but a mathematical construct that is used to understand certain interesting features of real space. And we are going to try to understand this connection using Fourier analysis. So for simplicity, let us consider a 1D lattice, a one-dimensional uh, lattice uh, with a lattice constant A. And we are going to look at uh, the charge density uh, of this one-dimensional system. Okay, so the red dots uh, represent our lattice points arranged in a uh, one-dimensional space and A is the lattice parameter and the blue curves represent the charge density of the system. Uh, one observation we want to make is that the charge density is a physical observable which means this is something that can be measured in the lab and uh, any physical observable has to reflect the underlying symmetry of the system. So in this particular case, because we have a one-dimensional lattice with the lattice parameter A, our charge density will display modulations such that uh, there is a translational symmetry um, with lattice parameter A that will be self-evident. Right? So the charge density in this particular case, as in any case, would display the symmetry of the underlying lattice with lattice parameter A. Now, because the charge density is periodic, we should be able to uh, express it in terms of a Fourier series. First, let's make a note uh, of what periodicity really implies. It basically implies that the charge den density rho, which is a function of position x, uh, when translated by a distance a will recover its original shape. So mathematically this can be written in this manner rho of x equals rho of x plus a. We can actually write it as rho of x plus n a where n is any integer. In other words you take the profile the charge density profile and shift it by an integer multiple of a and you will recover the original profile. So that's what periodicity implies. Next, let's write down um, the Fourier expansion of the charge density. So this expression is true for any function rho of x, periodic or not. G here is a reciprocal space quantity. The integral is over all values of G. And the function f of G is really the Fourier space representation of the charge density rho of x. So rho of x is a real space quantity, f of g is a reciprocal space or a Fourier space quantity. The reason we say that uh, g is a reciprocal space quantity is because if you look at the uh, exponent of uh, e, it's e to the i g x. Since x has dimensions of length, g has to have dimensions of reciprocal length so that that whole expression in the exponent is uh, dimensionless. So, okay, so this is a general expression uh, for the Fourier expansion of the charge density. Now, if we impose the constraint that our charge density is uh, periodic, which means, you know, rho of x equals rho of x plus a or rho of x plus n a, where n is an integer. If we impose this restriction, this integral gets transformed to a sum in this manner. So the integral has been replaced by a sum and the g can take on only specific value. So the integral g was uh, g could take on any value. Con it was a continuous variable whereas in the summation uh, g has to take on specific values of this type. So g is given by 2 pi n over a where a is of course the lattice parameter 
and n is any integer positive, negative or even zero. Let us now take a look at this expression uh, for g or gn uh, closely. So it's got an integer n which is multiplied by uh, 2 pi over a and hence it has uh, units of reciprocal length. Now if you consider our real lattice, let us say one of the uh, real lattice points is at the origin. All of the other uh, lattice points are basically n times a, where n is, a, is any positive or negative integer. So that constitutes the real space lattice. Now if you look at this expression for g, you will see that it has a similar form except that a is in the denominator and of course you have a factor pi. So you have 2 pi over a multiplied by an integer, positive or negative. So the lattice corresponding to the G's is called the reciprocal space lattice. And this is, uh, this is in one dimensional space. One could uh, extend this to two or three dimensional space and you will have 2D or 3D uh, reciprocal space lattices. So before we move on, let us make uh, yet another nice connection uh, still sticking with this one dimensional uh, example. Uh, let us now carefully look at uh, the f functions, right, the f quantities, which is the first term within the summation. So the f functions are essentially Fourier coefficients. And there is a coefficient associated with each value of g. Let me illustrate what I just said using this uh, diagram I'm just showing. Um, the picture on the left is uh, what we have seen before. So we have a real space lattice with lattice parameter A and there is a charge density associated with that uh, uh, lattice. On the right hand side we have a reciprocal space lattice with uh, lattice spacing 2 pi over A. So we assume that we have uh, a lattice point at the origin then um, um, as per the prescription of G just above um, we know that we have lattice points at plus minus 2 pi over a, plus minus 4 pi over a, and so forth. Now, the charge density in real space is basically this quantity over here. Now, these peaks that you see are the f's, f, uh, which is a function of the g's, right? So in other words, given a charge density, a periodic quantity in real space with lattice parameter A, you have a reciprocal space with lattice parameter 2 pi over A, and the real space quantity rho of x can equivalently be represented in the reciprocal space lattice by the numbers f's. And there is a number associated with each reciprocal space point which I'm indicating here using a delta function at each of the lattice points. This sort of a relationship between the real space and the reciprocal space can also be uh, understood by an analogous relationship uh, seen between uh, the time domain and frequency domain. If you have a, a sound signal uh, that you represent in time domain, uh, intensity of sound versus time, uh, that can be converted using a Fourier transform or Fourier analysis to, to frequency domain where you now plot the uh, intensity as a function of uh, frequency. Let us now move on to uh, three-dimensional situations. So here is the three-dimensional generalization where G now becomes a vector in three-dimensional space. Uh, written in terms of the three reciprocal lattice vectors b1, b2 and b3 and h, k, l are of course integers. Now the reciprocal lattice vectors b1, b2 and b3 are the reciprocal space analogs of our uh, real space uh, unit vectors a1, a2 and a3 and the b vectors, the b1, b2, b3 vectors are defined in terms of uh, this dot product, ai 
dot bj equals 2 pi delta ij where delta ij is a Kronecker delta meaning delta ij equals uh, 0 if i is not equal to j and delta ij equals 1 if i equals j and of course the ai's are the real space unit vectors which allow us to define the translational invariance in the real space lattice so note the beautiful analogy between the r vector and the g vector so the r vector is written as a linear combination of the real space uh, unit vectors or lattice vectors a1 a2 a3 n1 n2 n3 are integers likewise uh, the g's are written as a linear combination of uh, the uh, reciprocal space unit vectors or lattice vectors b1 b2 and b3 h k l are integers and in 3d the fourier transform of our three dimensional charge density rho of x vector is going to be given by this expression where we have a triple sum so the sum is over h k l all of whom are integers and of course uh, the g vector was uh, is defined at the top of this uh, screen so rho is the real space representation of our charge density whereas f is the reciprocal space representation of our charge density rho is a continuous function of x whereas f is defined only at the allowed uh, reciprocal space points g although we have used uh, uh, the charge density in all this discussion today the same analysis uh, apply equally um, to other quantities to any quantity uh, that displays a periodic variation in one space in which case a dual of that space can be defined and the original quantity can be represented in that dual space so real space lattices represent reciprocal space lattices and the real and the reciprocal spaces are duals of each other uh, the yin and yang so to speak that concludes our lecture today thank you